Yeah, I've started, so whenever okay. you're ready. This is a, this is examples of the arts, uh, art and transition, the program that was started by the Kemp Center for the Arts here. Um, I don't know the, all the background as far as who all, I know, I think Nancy did most of the flying or, or uh, Christine Heidelberg did a, the, I don't know where the idea came from, I don't know how it started. I don't know, just do research. It's not a unique program in that it's never been done anywhere else. It just, as far as I know, has never been done here. Now we have, in Wichita Falls, in this area, we have a penitentiary. But this wasn't part of the penitentiary system. This was part of the sheriff's jail, which is another prison, but it's, it's not... The, the people who were there, the men, and I just talked to men. Uh, the men who were there are, you know, it was for lesser crimes and not paying their bills and too many, not paying their traffic tickets and that kind of stuff. Then there was some, you know, domestic violence and that kind of stuff. But these guys weren't the hardened criminals. Um, so it was fun. Um, we started off, Christine approached me with this, with this idea of what we were going to do. So we had to go through all kinds of background check. They printed... Nobody even knew I existed. And now everybody, every law enforcement agency in the world has got my handprints, fingerprints, elbow prints, my face. Uh, I swear they've got, I had to do all kinds of stuff to, uh, so they've got a full document on me now. So if I break the law anywhere, they can find me real quick. Anyway, so it started there just with a kind of a thought and a, and a, playful thought of what we're going to do and how we're going to mess with this and then it evolved and started working with all the people here and uh, I was very fortunate to have some input in it um, and I the, the uh, annex is where I where I was teaching first started and it was only the males were out there and of course the females were incarcerated in there they were downtown at the courthouse the original Jail. But uh, we decided to start out there with the with the males first, and uh, they're making a new they're building a new prison. So I think this I think this program when they get it all and get all the everybody out there, male and female, of course they will, they'll be in separate areas, but they'll be in the same location. That's what I understand. And I think that in that way, they can, we will be able to expand the program maybe a little bit better or a little bit easier. Uh, and now Chris uh, actually was my, he wasn't my student teacher, but he was a student teacher under the other teacher at the same high school I was. So I've known Chris since he started teaching, excellent teacher. Took my place basically as the head of the department when I retired a few years ago. Uh, so after we got it started with the with the male uh, uh, prisoners out there, oh, and the way this started, just in case, the way this originally started, one day, the uh, the prison uh, trustees they come over here and they do yard work for the camp. Of course, they do it all over town, you know, clean streets and clean different stuff, but. Um, these are trustees that are they're coming along and they've got a, a, a deputy sheriff that uh, supervised them. Uh, and they were doing the work here and I was upstairs on the, on the third floor in the mezzanine and working on some artwork. And these guys came in and they were doing these, uh, these uh, pickets. Fence, fence post, fence fillers, whatever they are. They're not really the post, but it's the slats on the fence. And so they were designing these things, and, and the city was a different organization, but we, we were part of it also. So these guys came in, they were taking a break, and uh, it first started, they came up, they were upstairs taking a break, and I was doing the, some artwork, and so we started drawing a little bit, and then they ended up, they painted these, they had with some extra one of these left over from that project, uh, local uh, project. And so they finished painting these. There was a lot of interesting stuff, and these guys were really 
It was interesting. I don't think any of them were an artist or ever, I say, I don't think they ever made a li recognized themselves as artists or made a living doing art, but they were all creative. And it was really interesting to watch these guys. I know there's one of these in here, I don't know which one it was, that uh, the artists all signed them, or most of them did, but there was one, just a side story here, there was one where uh, he must have really uh, had a bad time with his, uh, I guess his ex, uh, because he had signed his name and had done something with his, uh, put his daughter's name on one of them, which I didn't know about this at the time, it didn't matter to me, but mom saw it, and so we had to, we had to remove the child's name from it. Uh, no big deal, but it was, that wasn't our purpose anyway. So and we just went along and played the game. That's just a little side bit of information. The fellas at the, at the annex, um, it was, they were supposed to be eight to 10, but most of the time it was anywhere between four and six. Because these guys' schedules, they have no control over their schedules. And, and the way that the, I learned a little bit about the system, they may have been already in three or four different prisons in, around Texas for, you know, for X amount of time. And so I, I guess it's to keep the guys so they don't get too close to one place and get too much. I don't know why, but they do that. So they, you know, they shift them to another place, and where they were with me, they would come in, and I'd had some, oh, I didn't teach these guys. I really did not teach these guys. I just supplied them with the materials and the repertoire and the rhetoric to get them motivated to do something. But I didn't even have to work hard at that. It was a nice break for them. And these guys who signed up came in there, and, and it was the, the, the turnaround, turnover was constant. And and I can't remember. I did this a year, I guess. Can't remember two times or three times in a row. I don't even remember three times in a row. We did it twice a month, three classes in a row that had exactly the same guys. Because I'd have some guys come in there, and I just, I man, I adore these guys. I don't know what they did. And we didn't talk about that a whole lot, but there was no restriction. The language was lively, all males. So there was no restriction on that, but they would come in and, and uh, they would just kind of be start working on whatever they wanted to work on, whatever I had material, and I'd get them jump started on something. But I didn't really have to teach them. I mean, I didn't have to, okay, this is how you draw this. And this. These guys figured that out. Well, these were mature men. I remember. <laughs> After the second class that I had, I was so impressed with these guys, and and I had good rapport with them. I mean, I wasn't intimidated; they knew it, and I wasn't intimidating either. So it was just a kind of a nice guy, and they talked about all kinds of stuff. But uh, I remember sitting there thinking about what it would be like to be incarcerated with all these guys. I mean, not having it, you know, not having your own space, your own place to go, or not having a moment of privacy. Uh, I, I, that always amazed me. But I would just, at the end, I would just bring the material in, and the guys would always ask, sometimes would ask me about, uh, uh, did I have to be, could I get them this or this to draw materials or something? And, uh, and so I would go to the camp bought the materials and I'd go get some materials where there'd be books that, that they could use for reference and drawings. I didn't have a lesson plan like I did for 40 years in the classroom. I had started off that way, saw that that wasn't going to work, so it was, I didn't need that. I just needed to bring the material and get out of the way. I was there if they had a question or if they wanted to know something, they didn't, they didn't hesitate to ask me and I would share my, my experience with them. But most of the time, they just came in, and they would talk, and they would work, and they got some really, really neat stuff. In fact, this whole wall here is just a sample of, this was the first thing they started off with, and then these were different projects. So was, uh, we were using, at first, a couple of these projects, like these coins. The camp was using them, um, the, the idea uh, of uh, a fundraiser. 
think is what it was. And so all I did was I went and bought the, the camp supply of the materials, but I went and picked up the material mason knot, cut out all these circles, got them prepped and primed and ready so that uh, all the prisoners had to do was just start making up their own money. And uh, some of them were really, <laughs> really interesting. I don't know, in, in Bender We Trust. Well, Bender was the name of, of the guy that did this. So they threw in little stuff, little, little things like that. Now, there were some drawing classes like these. These were in the beginning of the classes. Um, this guy, an interesting story about Michael. I don't know what he was in there for. Um, I, I think it was just not, not paying his his uh, traffic tickets, and I think there might have been a little bit of animosity and some problems between him and his ex-wife and the kids. But anyway, tall guy, nice guy, really talented. He loved motorcycles, but he found out that I rode motorcycles. That we had something in common, it was a bond. So he would just, he drew this. He, and he, gave, he did one before this one on his own, out there on his own, on own time. And then gave it to me. Uh, so it was a gift, and that, you know, that's all he could afford yeah. to give me. Uh, but I, I couldn't have asked for for a nicer gift. But we talked about motorcycles. We talked about drawing. The interesting thing on some of these drawings. This was a drawing. I did give him an assignment at the beginning. I said, you know, I want you to draw something in here, whatever you want to. But I want you, I want to be personal to you, and uh, whatever the subject matter is, doesn't matter. So on this one, uh, I, I really enjoyed some of the titles on this. Uh, this was a, a young Hispanic male, and just in two hours, as all of the time I had him, because he had, had transferred out to another, uh, I don't know what they call it, what the prison, but another place in the car, going to Abilene, they've got another, another place, and they transferred him over there. But his drawing technique was just, Fantastic. He was just natural born artist. Um, but I had him title them, and I got more kick out of the titles. Like this is the rose, is beautifully rendered uh, color pencil on dark paper. And his title for this one was, I Miss the Nice Smell of Family. Because we talked about what these meant to them. I mean, they had to, I, I wanted them to think about what they were saying, so they were making statements. I can remember this, this one. <laughs> his comment is, and his name of this was Everyone's uh, Angry. And we were talking about what people were like out there. The other, and he said, everybody out here is angry. And they're, they're all in the same, they all packed in cattle and they're all angry, but they can't, they, they don't express it necessarily violently because they're in prison. So they're, they're under someone else's control. But I thought that was interesting. And as far as his skill, this was a drawing that I gave him. The assignment was they had to look. I had some uh, little sculptures, and um, so they could look at the sculpture. But this was a, a drawing that they could not look at their paper. They had to follow the contour of the model with a pencil. But they were drawing here, and they had to time their movement of their eyes around it with the movement of the pencil. Uh, and it, w it takes a lot of concentration to do that. And you don't usually come out with what you th were going after. But in this case, it was, it was, even, it was even more significant. Uh, of course, he was every, everyone's angry because they talked about that out there. So, and the picture looks—it's not a free picture. It, uh, it's a, it's, it looks angry, and the lines are all out, and yet you know what it is. You know it's a figure. Uh, this this guy was also did a, a escape route. He was—he said when he got there, he said you're always thinking of some way that you can you can get out of here if you could, you know. And it's always wanting to get out, and, but not ever having the opportunity to try it, nor. The opportunity to really try to prison break, but he but he said it was on his mind all the time how to get out of here, how to get out, and realized he was just going to have to pay his time to get out. But his skills were very good. So this is him. This was a profile of him uh, looking at this maze. 
And we talked about this a little bit, and his idea, this, this maze of, of stuff going through, and he felt like in his life he was going, because we talked about realistic feelings. It was, I have a counseling degree, but I didn't go out there as a counselor. Uh, I used those skills. Some people call them counseling skills, and some people call it just the gift of gab. And then in some bars, there are, there are other terms that I won't use now, but, but they all mean the same thing. Just the ability to talk to people without intimidating them, and yet get to the heart of who they are. So that, that came natural for me, I guess. Obviously, I'm talking your ear off right now. Um, Michael got out finally. I have this, he did a bigger one for me and gave it to me. I was not expecting that, that was nice. But he told me, I think he found a friend in me that he, you know, and that was fine. But he did get out. He told me, what, and he came to class every time. He told me when he was going to get out. And sure enough, then that night I went to teach the class and he was already out. It was cold outside. Really cold. All he had on was a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, but he wasn't going back in that place. He was waiting for somebody to pick him up. Anyway, so we, we talked, you know, shook hands, you know, the, the little man bump and all this brotherhood thing. And, you know, it, it really, I really like Michael. Uh, talented builder. Man could build anything. That's what he did for a living. Well, after he got out, I guess it was maybe two or three weeks later, he called me. And uh, there were no restrictions as far as I was never told that I couldn't have anything to do with the prisoners when they got out. Or, and obviously, I didn't have anything to do with them when all you're in there because I wasn't going in there myself. But he called me. I went and picked him up. We went and had a nice dinner down at the steaks, the first steak he'd had in a long time. Um, so I took, him, I took him to dinner. I paid for it. He was, he was going to pay for it, but I figured that I would. Um, I haven't heard from him since. I think he's trying to get a hold of you, but either my email or his is not working. So, um, you know, I, I made a friend, uh, and I think he knows he made one, if we can just ever figure out a way to connect again, uh, communicate. Um, yeah, he was like, I think he considered me a big brother, uh, because he's pretty close to me. Uh, he's not as old as I am, but he's, you know, he's in his 40s, I think. Um, so, and then the, the, this group was the same, well, these coins were the same group pretty much as the guys that did the, well, for the most part, the guys that did the, the fencing post. Uh, and they were making their own money and designing the, their own, making their own design. Some of them were funny, United States of America, which talk county <laughs> currency, uh, a million dollar coin. Uh, 1982, I think, was the year that he was born. I think. Um, it, it was just a lot of fun to watch how they did these pennies, dimes, quarters, nickels. Uh, and here's, here are a couple more drawings from that first class. This was another one that got the, another uh, guy did this. He said, guys were always talking smack to each other. Smack is a is a, is a term uh, among the guys that if you're talking smack, then you're always just. I grew up thinking of it as BSing somebody. You can figure out what that means. Uh, but just shooting the bull with somebody and, and uh, maybe partly serious and partly just talking, relieving tension. So, but I, I always thought that was really important because he was very, very intelligent. Uh, another one, I did not have any dumb guys in the class. None. I even told them after the first couple, there's no reason for you to be in here. With this guy's talent, yeah, not one of you have, I mean, I, I kind of got on my box one. There's no reason for you to even be in here. You got this talent, you got this skills, and they just looked at me like, that's the first time anybody ever said anything. Even though it didn't sound like a compliment, it was a compliment. I scolded them. And they, these are grown men. And they was like, oh. He, they listened to what I had to say. I didn't go on and on about it. Didn't preach to them. I just said, there's no reason for you guys to be in here with this kind of skill and talent. And I, evidently, several of them have gotten out. And hopefully, they're 
doing well. Um, so, yeah, and this one, <laughs> this guy who was talking, when we were talking about all of these during the process, he said he felt like he was wasting time doing time. And his, his life was, had been put on hold and he was wasting precious time because he was probably in his late 30s and mm -hmm. early 40s. And that's one of the best times in a man's life, I think. Uh, you got enough sense not to get caught or not to do something wrong, but you're not so old, can't do stuff that you want to do. So I think he was, he was in that group and, and uh, he just felt like he was wasting time. So this is just an example of, of some of the... This, this artwork that was done out there. Now, since Corona came along, we've had to uh, delay the program. Uh, and it makes sense because these guys are, I mean, they're all, sounds terrible to say this, but they're like cattle in this huge holding pen. And uh, so uh, anything gets started there, it could be, uh, medically, it could be a, a real, real so we're not, we haven't done this for a while. Um, so this is a, when it gets started, oh, they expanded, they called Chris in. I took him for an example. I mean, I took him as an observer with me a couple of times. He enjoyed just watching these guys. He's an excellent teacher. He's, he's different. Uh, he's still got long hair. He loves, uh, he's a fantastic person. He's just absolutely fantastic person and father uh, and teacher. Um, but he's the art kind. He's, you know, he's a little bit different than the majority of people, but he fit right in perfectly. Um, and the, the guy's a great teacher. So he was, he was out there, and then they started a program because they were wanting the program was being successful. Not that we were making famous artists out of these guys, but the guys that were coming in and out and leaving, we saw a lot of turnover in the classroom. But these guys were going in taking, and talking about the program in there. So evidently, the powers that be saw that there was a, something positive coming out of the program. It never got back to be from higher up, but the way things happened, the transition, how things happened, uh, I kind of figured that out on my own, that these guys were enjoying what they were doing and enjoying the break. I remember, funny story, and I'll shut up. There was one young man in there, very talented. Oh my goodness, he was talented, um, artistically. And he was talking, and we were, they were just, he was drawing, and then they were all working. And I had a big class there, it was about eight people in there. They were all just working quiet as a mouse, they all, and he's, but he was talking to me, um, and he was talking about, uh, he had told me, he said, uh, I saw a cloud today. And they can't see outside in the old prison like it is now. So I, I, I said, what? He said, I saw a cloud today. I said, what do you mean you saw a cloud? I saw a cloud. I said, where did you see a cloud? Are uh, there skylights there? He said, no, you can't see. I did He said, I was on duty. I was scrubbing the floor. And he, he said, there was a long hall. And he said, there was a little window about this size. And he was probably a good 30 feet away from it. But he said, I was, I was scrubbing and doing it. And I looked up there, and I saw a cloud through that little window. I said, well, did you go down and look? He said, oh, no, I couldn't get up and walk down there. <laughs> Not to the next exit, no. So that wouldn't been that would not have been uh, a good move to make. But he said, I saw a cloud, the first one I've seen in I think he said three years or something. And so I thought, you know, in a way if these guys learn to appreciate seeing a cloud in three years or silence for their time in on duty, they learn to appreciate silent being silent, um, or being at still people and, and are, are even developing friendships that aren't based on incarceration. So I, I, I think it's been a good program. Uh, it's been well worth the time that, that, that the uh, administration here, uh, Nancy and Christine, uh, Heidelberg and well, 
Carol, everybody here, everybody has a piece of the action at this place. I know because I worked here for five or six years, so it's a good place. And, and uh, so everybody has, has kind of pitched in and made this thing work. Uh, I honestly don't know how much longer I'm going to be doing it, but Chris took over and they had to make him a class at the county jail. But he had females. And then, he, and he was excited about that. He's got a daughter. He's got a son and a daughter. Of course, I have three daughters. So we knew how to, to deal with the feminine as much as a male will ever know how to deal with females. But, uh, but through art, it's all the same. Art, art reaches the spirit, and the spirits are, are they don't, they know gender. Spirits are spirits, and you know the heart of people it has nothing to do with gender. So, but Chris, being being the excellent teacher that he is, uh, they just took right off, and and they had a little bitty room that was so tiny, you couldn't get six people in there. I mean, it was. It, that's where they were first going to do the classes, and I told them I wouldn't do them there. So they sent me out there, which was even better. I didn't mind that. I had to drive a little further, but. It but Chris said that, you know, and he said, finally, and they transferred and some of the prisoners out there, the male section, and they'll transfer them over there. So he, and for a while, he had mixed class. So I asked him about that. I said, well, you know, I, I, I'm curious. How did it go? Because it was a little bitty room, half the size of the Texas room here, a little bitty room, uh, about the size of <laughs> my uh, dining room that we had in the kitchen and I ate when I was growing up in a little old bitty house. Uh, so there wasn't much room for anything. But he said, I said, was there any problem? I mean, you've got guys that have been without partners and females. And I said, did they get along? Did they, did they argue? Was it snotty? Was it, you know, congenial? Was it flirty? Was it, you know, distant? He said, it was just like when he was teaching with me in high school. He said, Gary, it's just like high school. Then we had mixed classes. There's no difference. He said there was not a big problem. He said uh, everybody is, as a matter of fact, even then, he said, we didn't, they didn't talk about silly stuff, the males and the females. They talked about their art. And they were really honestly um, recognizing talents of each other. So it was, a, it was a good, wholesome place for them to be. So we'll see how it all comes out when they get the new place built. Thank you. Thank you.